Hello everyone, nice to see you all and welcome to my blog and it's a wonderful Friday morning in Hartlepool and I hope you've had a great week and, and things have everything's lovely this right I'm not gonna take take two because you know I live everything so um, this is the first take and this is the only take so if I muck up I muck up anyway so what we've got for today is um, laughter we've got witchery we've got spookery we've got um, I'm going to talk about this magnificent specimen I've got a special guest on, Jill, who is a fellow white witch like myself. She's absolutely lovely and she's as spooky as hell. She's gorgeous. Um, I'm going to be picking a card out for the day, a couple of cards out for the day. Jill's going to be picking a card out and I'm also going to be talking about where you... I've talked about all the tarot cards now. So what I'm going to be talking about today is where to lay them in a spread and like what place, you know, means what kind of thing, you know. So I've talked about the pentacles. Um, they're all about money um, and um, material things. They're the suit of the pentacles. I've talked about the cups, which are all about emotions, love, you know, feelings. The cups are, are water, the pentacles are earth. Then we've got the swords, which are the challenging suit. There's only a couple of good cards in the suit of swords. Jill, can you tell me what the good cards are in the suit of swords? The six and the ace. Oh, my God! She is, Jill comes to my coven on a Sunday and she's, she's uh, you know, she's my sidekick. She knows every card. Yeah, the Ace of Swords is a new beginning, a mental new beginning. And the Six of Swords is, is either a journey across water or coming out the rough sea, you know, going into the smooth metaphorical journey. Um, so they're the only two really good cards in the in the swords. Uh, and then we have the wands, the suit of wands, which are all about movement, all about your career, all about your persona. If you see a lot of wands in a spread, it means that there's a lot of things going on in your life and there's a lot of movement. Then we have the kings, the queens, the knights and the pages, which are all people in your cards. As you know, the kings are men over 40, the knights are men under 40, um, the queens are, are women of any age and pages are as are the messengers or the children and then we have the powerhouse of the cards the major arcana um, the 22 cards they're the most powerful cards some readers just use the major arcana i like to use all of them but some readers just um use the major ones so the major cards i've talked about them the lovers the fool the moon the star you know the judgment the death card um, they're not a suit as such they're just uh, the power cards so they're all the cards so what i'm going to be talking about today like i said is where to put them and how to place them in the spread you know because some cards can mean past some cards can mean future it's very complicated but it is such a wonderful fascinating um, thing really when you start using it in your everyday life um, so I'd just like to tell you a little titty before I get on right <sighs> said a pretty young girl called Jude the first time she saw a man nude I'm glad I'm the sex that's concave and not convex, for I'm not partial to things that protrude. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So let me talk about um, let me talk about the spreads and, and and where to put them. So say you have got somebody that shuffled the cards. Now the cards are very hard to shuffle because they're very big. Um, I mean, you know, I've got quite big hands, matron. Um, so I can shuffle them. But if you've got small hands, you might find that you find, you know, the, the hardest shuffle. Even if you just go like that with them, or even if you put them on the table and just cut them into a few different packs, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as you get your energy on the cards, it doesn't really matter. So, as I say, you would give them to a friend if you're doing your own. Let's say we're doing a, a, a friend today. Um, let's say, make a name up, Jill. Susie Witch. So... Susie Witch. And how old Susie Witch? 35. 35. Susie Witch is 35. This is a total um, made-up character. She's come to see me today to get her cards read. So I would say, right, Susie Witch, uh, girly, give these a good shuffle. So she'd be shuffling the cards. And then I'd say to her, right, when, when you feel as though you're ready, I want you to give me 10 cards wherever you know you want. Now, let's say that she's, um, she's going to give me 10 cards. So shall I just pick 10 random cards? Yeah. Shall I just pick 10 random cards? 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, um, 7, 8, uh, 9, 10. There you go. There's the 10 cards. Now, the first card that Susie has picked 
So if, if she's given you the cards like that, make sure that the first one is on the bottom because don't have them in a different order because they mean completely different things when they're in a different order. So make sure they go from one to 10, first being the bottom one, right? So you would turn that over first because that's the first one she's give you. Now, the first card always tells me a little bit about what that person's going through or, you know, where they are now. Now, Susie has got the devil. Now, the devil is one of the most fascinating cards in the pack. So don't read them separately because it might be a different thing altogether when you put a card across there, you know. So the first card is the one in the middle and that, as I say, that's all about what the person's going through now. So the devil. The second card would be, this is what's crossing Susie. Sorry, got a sweet in your mouth. I'm just going to take it out. Right, sorry about that. I just put a little bit of sweet in before, <laughs> before I started the vlog. <laughs> I bet Ruth doesn't have this problem. Um, anyway, so the Knight of Cups. Now, that's Cross and Susie. So the first card is that. Number two is that. Now, that's what's known as the crossing card. So that means what the thorn in your side is. You know, what's crossing you at the moment. So we've got the Devil. We've got the Cross by the Knight of Cups. And then the third card is the three of wands. Now that's hanging over her. So that is number three. So you've got one, you've got two, you've got three. That's hanging over her. So that's kind of in her life now, but not necessarily going to be in her life in the future, but it's hanging over her. Now number four, right, that goes at the bottom and that's the root of the matter. That's a good way of actually remembering because number one is now, number two is crossing, number three is hanging over her and number four is the root of the matter. So that's the base of everything, right? Number four, Five is what's going out of her life. Five is always the past. So either means what's going out of your life or what's just happened. It's always past tense. And that goes at that side. Number six, this is what's coming in immediate future. Uh, we've got the King of Swords there. This is the immediate future, which is number six. Number seven goes at this side. Now that's a little bit more information in her life, you know, a little bit more information about the future. That is number seven. Number eight is um, circumstances and um, what's going on around her, her environment, um, the people around her and everything. So that's uh, number eight. Number nine is the unexpected. Now, some people see this is number nine, is hopes and fears. Well, you know, I don't think hopes and fears is really relevant because, I mean, you know what your hopes are, you know what your fears are. So I think the unexpected is, is a bit more um, exciting than the hopes and fears. So number nine would be the unexpected and number 10 would be the outcome of the whole reading and that's the judgment card. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I would read them as, wow, she's got the devil here, right? She's crossed by the Knight of Cups. So if this was a cold reading, now there's two men in here, the King of Swords and the King of Wands. So mm, I would probably say that Susie, Susie Witch, has maybe had two fellas in her life or maybe she fancies one, she's thinking about another one, but she's already got one at the moment, you know? Um, you know, the King of Swords is maybe the one that's coming into her life, or the King of Wands maybe is the one that's coming into her life, but there's two kings here. Now, one of them is from a past, because the base of the matter is the Six of Cups. Now, that's all about somebody from your past. Remember, there goes my first love, right? So, um, as I say, that's um, somebody from your past. Now, what's going out of her life? You see, you, people could, re like you, Jill, if you were reading this, you might read it in a different way to me, because the Empress in her past, could mean you see the empress is a very womanly card it's, it, it means if it it's a, if it's about your love life it means a man's making you feel very womanly and and it's very sensual so you know or it may be the wife it may be um, pregnancy it may be your mother so this could be read in all different ways. If I'm doing a reading for somebody and I've got their energy in front of me and I'm getting spiritual feelings, I could probably tell what that's all about. But because this is a core reading today, it's very core, this Susie Witch is totally made up, so I'm not getting into feelings about the person. Are you with me? So this is a total cold reading. So the Empress can be anything, really. What do you, you know, what would you say that was, Jill, if you were doing as a cold reading? A mother, I think. You, th you think that's a mother going out of life? Yeah, I mean, there's no death here, though. 
There's no, no death, so I don't think it's the death of their mother, is it? Um, maybe it's one of these fellas' wives going out, you know? Maybe she's stopped being a wife and that's that's going out, you know what I mean? Um, now, at the, uh, the three of ones is an opportunity coming, remember? That's, that's your ship coming in, so there's some opportunity. She hasn't actually got a bad card, really. I mean, the devil, you know, the devil can mean someone with an addiction, so maybe this is a son. The Knight of Cups could be a son having an addiction, you know, um, mm. because that's another thing yeah. of the devil. It can mean temptation but it can also mean addiction so as I say the cards are so complicated but when a person sat in front of you you get the energy from that person and as I say it's it's, it's a different reading altogether this is just very cold so What's around her at the moment is the stalemate card. Means maybe she's not facing something, or maybe she can't make can't seem to make a decision about something, or maybe that's her son. If you look at that card, the cards can be very literal. So that that could be a son like not wanting to hear something. You know, if it is a son on drugs, it could be or, or drink or gambling. It, he's not wanting to hear something. You know. Um, now the six of swords is the unexpected, so that can either mean uh, um, a, um, a trip across water. It can mean you know so. I would say to her, Susie Witch, are you going on holiday? If she's not going on holiday, what it means is coming out of those rough seas and going into the smooth. Now, the end card is the judgment card, which is all about um, resurrection and rebirth and maybe making a decision. So if this is two men, you know, she's going to have to make a decision about one of them. Um, even if she's not actually seeing the two men, maybe she, you know, she's unhappy with this man and she's going to meet this guy. Or maybe it's her husband that's the devil. You know what I mean? So, like I say, when you first do cards, when, you, when you're faced with cards, sometimes you have to have to ask that person who you're reading for a few questions so you kind of know what you're dealing with i don't like to know too much about the person but i like to know the odd thing so i know where i'm going with the spread so there you go so one is as i say what is going on in your life now two is cross crossing you three is the immediate future four is the base of the matter the root of the matter five is what's going out your life six is what's coming in seven is a little bit more information about what's coming in number eight is what's around you and your environment number nine is the unexpected and number 10 is the outcome now sometimes i always ask um occasionally um to pick another card you know so if one card's a little bit ambiguous and i'm not sure you know what it means i'd say give me another card so let's have another card oh my god right so if i had to put another card on that king of swords to say give me a little bit more information about him this is a lover because you've got the two of the cups here so this is that's that's your soulmate that's all about your soulmate um wow oh i wonder if that applies to me <laughs> so men you never know um right so um <laughs> I've never cheated in my life, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Right, so I think it's, so I hope that's give you a little bit of understanding of, of what's coming in. Um, I would like to introduce my lovely guest now, um, Jill. Like I say, she's a fellow white witch like me. So would you like to uh, come and take a seat, darling? Hey, Will. <laughs> Hello. 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 Are you all right? Yep. Yes. This is Jill, everyone. She's absolutely gorgeous, and she's also a fellow white witch like myself. Yeah. Right, so, darling, would you like to ask me anything, like a question, or like a card of the week, or what would you like to... Uh... I'll have a card of the week, Jane. You want a card of the week, right. Um, so give them a little shuffle, right. get all your vibes on. Jill does the cards as well. She um, comes to my coffin Ooh. on a Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh they're all falling. Oh, they fell on the floor. Yeah, Lord. Oh, dear me. While Jill's shuffling in the card, shall we talk about this beautiful specimen? I can't hardly lift it, actually. Right. Oh, yes. Isn't this amazing? Right. The, uh, no, I've talked about it. So you carry on shuffling, don't worry. Um, this, is, this is a selenite. And it's the most powerful crystal, I think, of all the selenite. And this is a massive one. No real jokes. Um, but this is like shoving your hand in a um, electricity point. It, it's like, oh, it's the energy from this. If you put this in a room, wow, you wouldn't sleep, would you, for a week? No. You can't put this next to your bed because you wouldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you wrong, my friend's dirty minded. What I mean is, <laughs> you couldn't put it next to your bed because you wouldn't be able to sleep, would you? No. Being real, Jill. It's a magnificent specimen, that. It really is. Um, it's very heavy. And the selenite, as I say, it fills you full of energy and it gets rid of all those bad vibes. So if you've got anything negative going on at the moment, you need one of them in your house. Right. 
Right, I've shown Whenever you're ready, darling, let's see what the week ahead brings. Right, I have that one. Make sure it's the one. It's just one. Oh, the magician. I ain't getting that. Oh, one. right, the magician. Now, the magician, as you know, is all about manifesting the magic of the universe to bring it, you know, to, to make sure that something's going to work for you. Do you know what I mean? Now, you are very talented in the likes of tarot cards and palm reading and things, aren't you? And you have a lot of premonitions. So I think that's coming to the fore. Yeah. I think that's... Maybe you should take my witch class over when I go on holiday. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? If there were my cards, I did. Maybe I am going on holiday. Yeah. And that's why I've got the Six of Swords, and maybe there is, you know. Um, but, but the magician is all about... Um, manifesting your desires and your talent and, you know, bringing this into the fore. I think you were going to start doing this on a professional level. Give me another card. Let's see what, uh, what this is. I'll go for the top one. Oh, the two of wands. Right. Now, the two of wands is, an, is, is two opportunities coming because you've got two flames. So it looks as though these are good cards, Jill, and they're to do with your career and your um, creative side. Because ones, remember, are all about movement, aren't they? Yeah. So I think there's two um, flames coming into your life. Mind? Look at that little fella in the cave there. Yeah. So this could be somebody... I said you were going to meet somebody ages ago, didn't you? So maybe that's somebody hiding in the cave at the moment. He's not ready to come forward. Yeah. Give us another one. I'll have to go in the middle now. I know they're dead, they're, they're really hard to uh, yeah. I'll get on that one underneath. Right, okay. That means you feel a bit trapped where you are at the moment, is that right? Yeah. You do, don't you? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't want to go into too much about when I've got a guest on, I'm careful what I say because obviously I don't want to dis you know, disclose too much about the personal life. Brando, for a fact, Jill feels a bit trapped at the moment. So that is spot on. You're going to get away out, my darling. Because the Eight of Swords is all about entrapment, but it means you're going to get out because there's two opportunities coming to you. And one of them is to do with one of your talents, which I know for a fact is tarot reading. So I think you're going to, um, I think you're going to do this on a professional level. That's where I think. And I think you're going to help other people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Is there anything else you'd like to ask? No, but crystals or anything, or anything you want? Pendulums? No, not really. No, are you quite satisfied with that little? Yes. Bit? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to stay here while I while I pick a card of the week? Yeah. Right. Fab. Some people don't like to. Some people are a bit camera shy. But our Jill isn't camera shy. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so let's um let's have a card of the week. This is for everybody. So this will relate to everybody. This card. Right. Okay. Oh. <gasps> Right, we've got the sex card. Right, now in some decks that means the celebration card, as you know. But what does that look like to you? Sex. It's just sex, isn't it? So um, the card I go would be, uh, I need a bit of a click for this. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, and da, da, da. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. When you put your arms around me, I get a fever that's a hard to bear. You give me fever. When you kiss me, fever. When you hold me tight, fever. In the morning, fever all through the night. That's that card, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Sex, passion, get your legs shaved. Um, be prepared for some love coming into your life. Right. Next card. I think we'll have one more card, eh? Yeah. Right. <gasps> We've just talked about that. The Six of Swords? Yeah. Now, this can mean two things, the Six of Swords. It can mean a journey, like a literal journey, going across the water, right? Or it can mean... Go on, tell them, Jill. Coming out with choppy waters. Going yeah. into calm seas. Going into calm seas, yeah. So, um, if this was a song, it would be... Um, 
Gonna take a sentimental journey Gotta set my heart at ease Doris Day, me mother um, International Women's Day today, Joe Right International Women's Day, March the 8th So I always say keep empowering each other Yes. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's what the coven's all about on a Sunday, isn't it? Girl power. Girl power, empowering each other, lifting each other up, not not putting each other down, you know. Um, so, the Six of Swords, you're either going on holiday and having great sex, <laughs> or you're coming out of the rough waters and, you, and you're going to have good sex. But either way, I think you're going to have a good week, everyone. Um, let's hope it applies to most of you. I hope it applies to me. <laughs> and you, <Jill. laughs> Well, listen, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's blog. I'll say, sorry I've been here for a while, but, you know, sometimes life gets in the way, doesn't it? And you can't always yeah. plan things. But um, So have a wonderful week full of sparkles and laughter and passion and everything wonderful. And I'll see you on Sunday in the Coven, darling. Yes. Mwah. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Should I just sing a, sing while, a song while she's telling the... the uh, what would you like me to sing, Jill? Share. Share. Does he love me? I want to know. How can I tell if he loves me so? Is it in his kiss? Oh no, you'll be deceived. Is it in his smile? <laughs> oh no, you <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is uh, this is totally ad lib. Right, oh, I just have to tell you, I've got a masquerade show coming up um, on the 31st of May. If you would like tickets, um, it's going to be a fantastic eight piece band and me, and I've got Liv and G on there, uh, which are brilliant singer songwriters, and it's going to be candlelight and nibbles and cabaret and great. So, um, and you have to get a mask. So, if you want to come, let me know. 31st of May in the Borough Hall. So, have a lovely week, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.